Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand interconnect scaling. In the past, we have seen that we can scale our MOSFET devices. We saw two types of scaling, constant field scaling and constant voltage scaling. And we saw the advantages of scaling a device. We also defined scaling then, which meant that reducing the physical dimensions of the MOSFET, keeping the geometrical ratios the same. We can apply the analogy of scaling to interconnects as well, because now the transistors have shrinked down, so we can shrink down the interconnects as well. Interconnects are nothing but the wires. And scaling the interconnects, we will see whether how useful the results are. One thing to keep in mind with interconnects is, interconnect is nothing but a wire, which is nothing but an RC component. So we'll be able to predict the delay or the speed of operation through the interconnects. So let's see on scaling what will happen to it. Dimensions of the interconnect which are set during processing are the width of the interconnect which is given by W, the thickness of the interconnect which is given by T and the oxide thickness which is given by TOX. Now if we use improved lithography process, lithography is nothing but photolithography process, it allows us to reduce the line width of the interconnect by a factor of S. So the width of the interconnect was W. Now W dash after scaling we said that the line width can be reduced by a factor of S where S is greater than 1, so I have reduced my line width. And now we are going to see what will happen due to this reduction in the line width only. At this point of time, we are not touching the thickness or the thickness oxide, means TOX or T. We are just assuming the change in line width and let's see. We know that the sheet resistance, which we have already studied in the previous clip, RS, is given by rho by T. This is nothing but thickness and rho is nothing but resistivity. As this is a constant, this does not change. We just said that we are just varying the width. So we are not varying the thickness also. So this also does not change. That means there is no change due to scaling on RS. So RS dash would be equal to RS. Very straightforward. We also know that line resistance per unit length, small r, is given by sheet resistance upon the width of the interconnect. So R dash is going to be equal to RS dash upon w dash we know that rs dash is same as rs it does not change and w dash is w by s which we just saw so this is nothing but s into rs by w which is nothing but s into r which says that the line resistance per unit length increases by a factor of s let's see what happens because of this before we finally conclude about the total line resistance r line Let's assume that my line len also scales down. So L is also scaled down. So in short, my L and W both are scaling down. I'm trying to achieve surface scaling here. And when my line L also scales down, it means my L dash is equal to L by S. Now the total line resistance is given by R line, which is equal to small r into L. We know that R dash increases by a factor of S. Whereas L dash decreases by a factor of S. So I can easily say that there is no change on my R line and my R line dash is equal to R line because R is getting increased by a factor of S and L is getting reduced by a factor of S. So this completes R line. Let's quickly go ahead and see about what's happening on C line. Don't get intimidated by the equation. Again, it's beyond the scope to derive this. We have already seen that the equation is derived for the capacitance per unit length, including the fringing field capacitance as well. So capacitance per unit length C is given by permittivity of the oxide into 1.15. That term is into width of the interconnect upon the thickness oxide plus 2.8 into thickness of the interconnect upon the thickness of oxide. The whole raised to 0.22. This is the formula. Now we are going to ignore the fringing capacitance here and I'll assume that only this term dominates. What is going to happen after scaling is we know that W is scaled down by a factor of S. So C dash is equal to 1.15 into W dash. W dash is nothing but W by S. So I'm still putting that. TOX does not change. And I've ignored this term. So I can easily say that my C dash is reduced by a factor of S compared to C. Correct? What is C line now? CL. So C dash line is C dash L dash. We know that C dash is nothing but C by S. And L dash is nothing but L by S. Which is nothing but C line by S square. So this tells me that my C line gets reduced by a factor of S square. So my total delay after scaling of width and length of my interconnect surface scaling I get is nothing but 
R line remains as it is, C line gets reduced by S square. So after scaling of my interconnect, my delay gets reduced by S square, which is quite good. So now in the next clip, what we are going to see is what is going to happen if I scale down my vertical dimensions also, which is nothing but my thickness of my interconnect and thickness oxide also. Hope you have followed. Stay tuned and thank you very much.